Hello friends, welcome back to our part 2 of INICT 2021 recall session. First, serious question. Which of the following statement is true? In atrial fibrillation, option A, novel oral anticoagulants, NOAX, are given in moderate to severe mitral stenosis. B. Anticoagulants should be given in patients who develop stroke due to atrial fibrillation. Option C. No acts are contraindicated with patients with prosthetic valves. And D. Beta blockers can be given in patients who are not candidates of cardiac surgery to in atrial fibrillation. Okay, so what are the op options uh, are true. So first, in atrial fibrillation, the atrium doesn't contract, blood stays there, stasis followed by thrombosis, thrombus forms and this thrombus might embolize to the cerebral circulation leading to acute ischemic stroke. Yes. So now, what are you going to do? So now, if you see, actually in acute ischemic stroke, there is no role of anticoagulation. We'll just give antiplatelets. But here, if you find it is due to some uh, some clot present in the atrium, which will be continuously showering clots, embolizing to the uh, brain, there you must give anticoagulation. So how to proceed with this? First, you are finding acute ischemic stroke patient and you have found that it is due to atrial fibrillation. Then check his BP. If his BP is persistently high, more than 185, 110, or if he has a massive infarct, meaning more than two third of the MCA territory, middle cerebral artery territory, or more than half of posterior cerebral artery territory. If these are there, then it's ominous. So here you shouldn't give anticoagulation because the risk of bleeding is more. And if these symptoms are not there, then you can go and anticoagulation is must in these patients. When to start? Warfarin, it should be started one day after the onset of stroke and no acts, no oral anticoagulants within two days of onset of stroke. Okay. Yeah. So what are these no oral anticoagulants? Why are they called novel? Because they are actually better than warfarin in every aspect. But exceptions are there. First is severe mitral stenosis. And in case of patient with any prosthetic mechanical valves. Because we haven't had that much studies indicating their efficacies. So only they are selling warfarin is always preferred in severe MS and any prosthetic valves. Next is if any drug is, uh, drugs are also you are giving which will be inhibiting the metabolism of NOAX. So there are also exceptions. So three exceptions you should remember with respect to NOAX. NOAX are nothing but this Dabigatran, Rivaroxaban and uh, Apixaban all these things. Coming to the rate control in AF as we know the mnemonic BCD. Beta blocker, calcium channel blockers like Verapamil or Diltiasm, D for Digoxin. When you should give, check for the heart functions. If there is no LVSD, meaning left ventricular systolic dysfunction is not there, then you can happily give beta blocker or calcium channel blocker. If there is left ventricular systolic dysfunction, then you should go for digoxin. So only they have asked in the question that the those who are the candidates for non-cardiac surgery, meaning their heart is working fine. So there you can give beta blockers. A breast cancer patient on chemotherapy paclitaxel develops fever. Her WBC counts is 3000. Which antibiotic is contraindicated? A. Piperacillin tazobactam B. Linozolin C. Miropenem and D. Cefepem So here actually you should know some interesting points about the word linozolin. In the word itself everything resides. How? First, line. Line meaning IV line. 
like oral and IV bioavailability are exactly the same 100% bioavailability. Next, the line bones. It inhibits the bones, bone marrow suppression causing leukopenia as well as thrombocytopenia. This thrombocytopenia usually uh, happens like till two weeks of therapy. Next, Z. Z for cheese. Cheese reaction if you give with monamine oxidase inhibitors. Next, L. O and L. L if you see, this linozolate concentrates wherever mitochondria is there. It inhibits the mitochondria. So mitochondria is where TCA cycle happens. So all the pyruvate which comes to the mitochondria to get processed are inhibited from entry. So all the pyruvate will be di di directed to the anaerobic metabolism causing lactates. So lactic acidosis is a complication. Next, this lactic acidosis, it also concentrates on the nerves depressing their conducting ability. So it can cause optic neuritis. O for optic neuritis, also peripheral neuropathy. So everything about linozolid is within the term itself, linozolid. So since it causes bone marrow suppression and also paclitaxel itself also causes bone marrow suppression, if you give to, to such patients having leukopenia, it will just result in further bone marrow suppression and febrile neutropenia. Uh, complications. Yeah. Next question. Ancomycin acts by inhibiting what step of cell wall synthesis? A. Transpeptidation step. B. By binding to D. Ala D. Ala. C. By inhibiting phosphoenol pyruvate synthetase. So, in this options, let's see the vancomycin story. So as we know, bacterial cell walls are composed of peptidoglycans, glycans, glucose moiety, which is the NAG and NAM, N-estyl glucosamine, N-estyl muraminic acid. These are glucose particles with the peptide chains. In this peptide chain, if you see in the last, there will be two amino acid, D-alanine, D-alanine. So with this protein moiety only, these two glucose molecules stick to each other. This is transglycosylation step. This step is inhibited by vancomycin by binding to the d ala d ala so that the two glucose molecules are not at all bound to each other. Thus, it is a bactericidal antibiotic. So, this vancomycin was doing. It was proving to be successful. So, what the bacteria cleverly did was, what is your binding point? d ala d ala so let me change it into d ala and d lactate now vancomycin was confused it couldn't bind so there appeared this clever organism resistant to vancomycin vrsa for this we upgraded ourselves and developed two antibiotics which is taptomycin and linozolid drug of choice in vrsa and one point you should know here in Daptomycin is an uh, antibiotic which is inactivated by surfactant. So, if a pneumonia is caused by VRSA, you can't give daptomycin. There you should go for linozolid. Okay, that you should remember. Next, in a patient diagnosed with TB as well as HIV simultaneously, what are you going to do? Are you going to start ART first and then ATT? Or first ATT? After two weeks, then ART or start ART and ATT therapy simultaneously. So let's see the possibilities. What and all possibilities are there? First, patient has been diagnosed as TB, then he has been diagnosed as HIV. So here, what will you do? If the patient is diagnosed with TB initially, we will be obviously starting with ATT treatment. And when he develops HIV, obviously we will be starting with ART, irrespective of CD4 count. Yes. Next possibility. If the patient is developing HIV and TB simultaneously, then here you should first initiate anti-tubercular therapy, then wait at least for two weeks. The time cutoff actually is two to eight weeks 
but at least for two weeks you should wait and then you should start ART because if you start together or if ART start initially or simultaneously our immune cells will be activated and this will result a complicated syndrome known as iris immune reconstitution inflammatory syndrome so to prevent this first give ATT suppress the rapidly proliferating uh, mycobacterial species then you can start with ART next possibility patient already known HIV patient now he has developed TB what you will do known HIV patient you will be giving ART and now he has developed TB so here you should be giving ATT but you know that protease inhibitors are site 3A4 inhibitors and uh, rifampicin is inducer so these two can't be given together so what you should do is you should change from rifampicin to rifabutin this interaction won't be there or if the patient is on nevirapine or ifavirenz you should change rifampicin to rifabutin it has lesser interactions you should remember this okay yes so the option to our question will be first ATT two weeks ART next question a HIV patient with migraine on treatment with ergotamine he suddenly develops sudden onset cold clammy foot with absent pulse, popliteal pulse and this image was given below so what is the cause a ergotism b atherosclerosis c embolism so what's happening here see ergotamine is a drug which is metabolized by cytochrome p 3a4 so whenever you give any cytochrome p 3a4 inhibitors then what will happen like protease inhibitors or azole antifungals what will happen this ergotamine won't be metabolized its concentration increases and it's a strong vasoconstrictor so it causes vasospasm of the cerebral blood flow vessels cerebral vessels causing reduced blood supply to the brain and same happens in the heart coronary blood vessels resulting in angina and myocardial infarction same happens in the large intestine resulting in ischemic colitis and this same can also happen suddenly to the lower extremities or extremities resulting in ischemia and gangrene sudden onset gangrene so this ergotism treatment that can be given in sideroblastic anemia vitamin b12 iron b6 or b9 what is the vitamin you can give so let's see about sideroblastic anemia what happens is in hemoglobin the heme part how it is formed initially one amino acid comes glycine combines with succinyl coa to form delta ala amino levulinic acid so the enzyme will be amino levulinic acid synthetase the cofactor to this enzyme is vitamin b6 so if this enzyme is absent congenitally I, uh, delta ala synthetase enzyme is absent congenitally will result in congenital sideroblastic anemia which is x linked and that can also be acquired deficiency of the enzyme how because the enzyme's cofactor is not available vitamin b6 deficiency or b6 can be depleted by concomitant drug therapies like in ATT isoniazid will deplete this b6 so only whenever you give ATT we will always prescribe pyridoxin along with ATT okay yeah next is there are some acquired cause of sideroblastic anemia also like excessive alcohol intake can cause copper deficiency can cause all these also things you should be remembering with regards to sideroblastic anemia here the patient mostly will be having microcytic hypochromic anemia similar to iron deficiency anemia since this heme is not at all forming and also the patients will have the ringed sideroblast in peripheral smear as well as in bone marrow patient having severe burning like pain on the right half of the body upper and lower limbs and whenever you touch also the patient winces with pain so which of the marked structure is affected in this disorder yeah this is nothing but the thalamic pain syndrome so what happens is 
thalamus is the structure where all the sensations will end terminally and from thalamus it will go to the sensory cortex radiation so if thalamus is affected due to some ischemic stroke post in the recovery phase of the stroke this thalamus begins to fire unnecessarily even in the absence of sensation it will be firing which means sensations will be abnormally coming abnormal pain sensations will be there in the contralateral half of the body since sensation from one half relate to contralateral thalamus this happens and also if you see any simple touch in that area will aggravate this pain again and again so this thalamus is hyper irritable there can you uh, correlate this to some epilepsy where some neurons are hyper functioning same thing is happening so in this pain disorder you can't be going and giving nsaids here you should give anti epileptics because neural pain this is giving like uh, carbamazepine phentoin all these can be tried which thyroid diuretic you will go use in stage 4 ckd option a clothalidone hydrochlorothiazide metlazone or indepamine so the, the here the option is metlazone if you see in uh, ckd patients and nephrotic syndrome patients where their edema is not resolving and also in heart failure patients will first try with lasix furosemide maximum dose if it is not control then we will start this metlazone because it has tendency to uh, overcome this furosemide resistance and also it acts even in low gfrs these are the benefits of this metlazone yeah next a 56 year old lady with severe backache multiple osteolytic lesions presents with a calcium level of 13 and total protein and albumin if you see 2.5 and hemoglobin 8 so diagnosis is everything they have got milk alkali syndrome hyperparathyroidism multiple myeloma metastatic disease so here just see the calcium levels 13 here you should know to calculate correct calcium you should not take instantly the calcium levels because as albumin level decreases the ionized calcium levels increase in the body so correct calcium is equal to the given calcium plus 0.8 into 4 minus serum albumin so correct uh, calcium is 13 plus 0.8 into 4 minus 2.5 so that will come around to 14.2 so calcium is obviously raised more than 11.5 next renal functions kft serum creatinine more than 2.1 uh, yeah next anemia is there hemoglobin 8 next osteolytic bone lesions are there nothing but the crap criteria of multiple myeloma c for hypercalcemia calcium levels more than 11 R for renal abnormalities, serum creatinine more than two, A anemia, hemoglobin less than ten, and B for uh, multiple osteolytic lesions or in the bone marrow. If you see plasma cells will come out. All these are diagnostic of multiple myeloma. Yes. A nine-year-old boy complains of colicky abdominal pain and recurrent nausea, vomiting, and X-ray. suggestive of multiple air fluid levels and egg the stool uh, routine was done the egg was shown in the picture and what interleukin is secreted in this child interleukin 1 3 4 or 5 so this see this uh, history it's just some worm infection is happening and the egg given was a ascaris egg this is nothing but ascariasis so what happens in ascariasis the eggs which are ingested by the child reaches the terminal intestine large intestine cecum from where they pierce and they go to the uh, through the lymphatics they reach the lungs above and there they activate the lymph eosinophils because they are mediators in parasitic infections so the use for eosinophil activation interleukin 5 is needed 
okay after getting activated the eosinophils will produce pneumonitis which is the lawless pneumonia first described in ascariasis next what happens is this worms can obstruct the terminal ileum causing ileal obstruction intestinal obstruction resulting in at a vomiting nausea colic abdominal pain all these things and multiple air fluid levels in x ray also serves to of obstruction and ileum is a site where b12 is absorbed so b12 deficiency will happen next these worms can migrate and block the ducts pancreatic ducts resulting in acute pancreatitis can block the hepatobiliary ducts resulting in bile ducts are blocked obstructive jaundice all these are possible with ascariasis whatever doubts you have you can post it in your comment section we'll be replying soon and the notes will be available in our whatsapp as well as telegram groups all the best see you in the next part